This is India at 9, broadcasting live from the CNN IBN headquarters in New Delhi with Rajdeep Sardesai. Good evening, hello and welcome to India at 9. It's Friday night. Before the weekend, the news, the newsmakers, the talking points are here on your primetime destination. Tonight, the man who's making all the news in an exclusive interview to CNN IBN gives another twist to that big question. When will general elections be held in the country? That's right, that's our big story and our big focus tonight. That's right, Mulayam Singh Yadav makes it clear a day after Prime Minister admits that he could withdraw support to the UPA, the SP chief backs down, tells CNN and IBN he won't withdraw just yet but maintains elections will be in November and sticks to calling the Congress a party which betrays allies. The big question, can the UPA survive till 2014? We'll have that Mulayam Singh interview coming up and a special panel here on our talking point tonight. That's not all. There's plenty more in our headlines this Friday night. The rest of India is not supporting this. If all of India was to support it, it would be another matter. But if one state supports something, we are sensitive to their concerns, but we don't necessarily have to accept everything they say. External Affairs Minister Salman Khurshid rejects the Tamil Nadu Assembly resolution for Sri Lanka to not be treated as a friendly country, a CNN IBN exclusive. Maharashtra MLA is accused of beating up a policeman inside the assembly. Could get away. Police sources claim CCTV footage isn't enough to prove the case. Despite 28 cameras, is political pressure being exerted to get the MLAs off the hook? Tribal Affairs Minister Kishore Chandra Dev lashes out at the Chhattisgarh government for failing to do their duty. Says higher-ups could be involved in pushing tribal girls in government-run hostels into prostitution. It's an IBN 7 investigation. We want uh, justice in this matter, Madam, and uh, we want uh, this government has to take uh, take them under uh, uh, scrutiny of law. A plea for justice from the family of a 38-year-old mother of two left in a vegetative state after doctors in a Bangalore hospital botched up her anesthesia treatment. The government promises help after CNN and IBN campaigns for justice through citizen journalism. A shoe is thrown at former Pakistan President Parvez Musharraf just minutes after the Sindh High Court extended his protective bail for 15 days in the 2007 emergency case. And New Zealand cricketer Jesse Ryder is out of coma and responding to his family but remains in critical condition. Two men arrested for the brutal assault on him. But first tonight, an exclusive interview with the politician who perhaps holds the key to how long UPA 2 will last. Tonight, Mulayam Singh Yadav has told CNN and IBN the Samajwadi party will not withdraw support for now. He has also claimed the Congress will opt for early elections in November on its own. He also says that the Congress, he calls the Congress a party of betrayers and says that they sent the minister of an alliance partner to jail. The SP chief slammed the Congress claiming it misused the CBI and income tax authorities against allies. Mulayam insists he's not eyeing the Prime Minister's job and says a third front will be formed but only after the elections. Reacting to the Prime Minister's statement yesterday that the Samajwadi party might leave, Mulayam said he doesn't know why the Prime Minister doesn't trust the Samajwadi party. Here's Bupendra Chaube, our National Bureau Chief, speaking to Mulayam Singh Yadav. Hey, Daddy, kal humne dekha ke Manmohan Singh ne khud ek विदेश यात्रा से आते हुए जहां पर उन्होंने कहा कि इस संभावना से दरकिनार नहीं किया जा सकता कि समाजवादी पार्टी शायद यूपी से समर्थन वापस ले ले मुझे यह बताएं ऐसा क्या घट गया है पिछले एक वर्ष में कि आपके और कांग्रेस के रिश्ते जो हैं इतने खराब हो गए हैं अब से कोई खराब नहीं हुए अब पता नहीं प्रधानमंत्री जी ने कैसा आधार पर यह बात कही अभी समर्थन बेटों की बात तो कोई हमारी पार्टी में आई पंद के बीच में ये जोर का है कि ये पार्टी जो कांग्रेस सरकार है घोटालों से बच नहीं पा रहे हैं दूसरी तरफ हमारे साथी अकेला ने इनकम टैक्स और सीबीआई का दुरुपयोग करने की पूरी कोशिश की गई आपके खिलाफ सीबीआई का दुरुपयोग के खिलाफ थोड़ी की गई आप जगह 
कानूनी की बेटी के खिलाफ भी हो गई उनके मिनिस्टर के भी खिलाफ हो गई औरों के भी खिलाफ हो गई आप कहते हैं कि कांग्रेस दरअसल सीबीआई का दुरुपयोग करती है उन राजनीतिक दलों के खिलाफ जिनकी उनको जरूरत पड़ती है इनकम टैक्स पर और सीबीआई उनके हाथ में है तो जब चाहे पास सवाल करता है वो करते रहे हर व्यक्ति ये जानना चाहता है कि मुलायम सिंह यादव क्या यूपीए से समर्थन वापस लेंगे या नहीं स्पष्ट सवाल है सर इस पर सवाल है कि अभी समाजवादी पार्टी यूपीए सरकार से समर्थन वापस लेने का कोई सवाल नहीं आपकी जो जो एक, एक, एक रणनीति थी सर आपकी आप एक तीसरे मोर्चे की जो बात कर रहे थे अब आप ये कह रहे हैं कि आप समर्थन तो वापस लेंगे नहीं आप कहते हैं लेकिन नवंबर में चुनाव नहीं बहाना नहीं देंगे अभी बहाना नहीं देंगे ठीक है हाँ। लेकिन ये जो तीसरा मोर्चा है ये तीसरा मोर्चा कहां से पैदा होगा सर वो कौन से दल है जिनके साथ आप रहना चाहते अच्छा जब जब तीसरा मोर्चा पैदा हुआ कोई जानता था वो पैदा हो गया यकायत अपने आप हो जाएगा हाँ बिल्कुल हो जाएगा चाहे वो बीजेडी हो वो डीएमके हो तृणमूल कांग्रेस हो कोई भी पार्टी कोई भी हो मैं नाम लेता हूँ किन दलों के साथ आप रहना चाहते हैं वाम दलों के साथ रहना चाहते हैं ये तो बीजेडी के साथ रहना चाहते हैं ये चुनाव एनसीपी किसके साथ चुनाव के बाद अपने आप बैठते हैं और जब स्थिति देश की होती है तो अपने आप मोर्चे जब जब बने हैं आप बताइए चुनाव के पहले बने कि चुनाव के बाद बने चुनाव के बाद बने और मुलायम सिंह यादव उस मोर्चे की अध्यक्षता करेंगे नहीं वो तो बाद की बात है आप प्रधानमंत्री बनना चाहते हैं नहीं मैंने प्रधानमंत्री बनने का कभी नहीं सोचा आपको नहीं लगता कि मैंने कभी नहीं सोचा आपने सोचा नहीं लेकिन आप चाहते कि नहीं चाहते अगर आप एक तीसरे मोर्चे की बात करते हैं ये सब दल आते हैं उसकी अध्यक्षता मुलायम सिंह मैंने सोचा ना अभी सोच रहे अभी नहीं सोच रहे आप इसके बारे में मैं आपसे अंत में दोबारा से पूछना चाहूंगा कि क्या कोई ऐसी सूरत है जिसमें मुलायम सिंह यादव और बीजेपी के नेता एक ही मंच पर रहे क्या राजनीतिक तौर पर आप लोगों के बीच कोई डील हो सकती है सर सब बीजेपी से मिल जाए सारे हिंदुस्तान के दल बीजेपी से मिल जाए लेकिन समाजवादी पार्टी बीजेपी से नहीं मिलेगी ओके ऑफकोर्स दैट इंटरव्यू इज ऑलरेडी स्पार्क ऑफ स्पेक्यूलेशन that mulayam singh wants to keep the congress gressing at one level saying elections will take place in november but still saying he will not withdraw support while mulayam keeps the congress gress guessing one ally has come out in support of the upa jammu and kashmir chief minister omar abdullah of the national conference made it clear his party is staying in the upa he was speaking to cnn ibn suhasni haider I I don't know on what basis uh, Mulayam Singh Yadav ji is is basing his prediction but I I would be reluctant to uh, to go along with that I think we'll we'll have to wait for the the electoral results to see what happens But given what he is essentially saying that these elections will see a new formation are you at all reconsidering your support to the Congress will you go into the next elections as an ally We have never been fair weather friends uh, more often than not if you look at the national conferences history uh, we have been the victim terms of political machinations and and sort of uh, uh, as you would say dokha uh, in hindi uh, we have not been uh, the perpetrators of such acts so i i i don't see a situation where we would uh, sort of abandon uh, the upa just because things look bad for them okay so omar abdullah is giving support but mulayam is keeping the congress guessing how is the opposition though looking at mulayam's move the trinamool has already made it clear they will move or they want to move a no confidence motion again listen in to the bjp the jdu and the trinamool three key players in how the political situation now is evolving mulayam singh yadav ke sath na hamara atit mein koi sambandh raha hai na vartaman mein hoga na bhavishya mein iski koi sambhavna hai हमारे और उनके बीच प्रामाणिक मतांतर है सरकार को मुझे नहीं लगता है मुलायम सिंह आज से नाराज नहीं है वो कांग्रेस पार्टी के मन से खिलाफ है लेकिन पिछले नौ साल से जो परिस्थिति है उसमें वो उनके साथ रहे हैं और आगे भी वो साथ छोड़ेंगे नहीं जेडीयू के बारे में सोचना ही गलत है हम एनडीए में है एनडीए में रहेंगे Last six months, Trinamool Congress clearly stated that this is a minority government. This government has got no moral right to continue for a single moment. We are opposing the anti-people's activities, anti-people's decision. This time, it is very clear we want this government should resign immediately. Okay let's then look at the current UPA strength in the Lok Sabha why is Mulayam the key this is again the big chart that we put up on our video wall total house 539 the UPA remember is down to 232 after the DMK withdrew support 
The outside support comes from 49 MPs of the Samajwadi Party, the BSP, RJD and the JDS adding up to 281. Now what happens? If Mulayam Singh decides to withdraw support as some believe he might in the next three months, he's told us he's not, that number comes to 259. Then the UPA has to get abstentions. It has to get parties to abstain. How can it survive? Scenario 1, it gets the DMK to abstain. Because if, these, if parties like the DMK abstain, then they can bring the halfway mark down to 261 along with the DMK bring the left also to abstain and because the left may not want to be on the same side as the BJP or in scenario 3, scenario 2 as I said is DMK and left get also the Janta Dal United of Nitish and the Tinamul to abstain the halfway mark comes to 230 and the government can survive so the government's only hope of survival if Mulayam were to withdraw support tomorrow was to ensure abstentions. Let's then raise the big question. Can the UPA survive till 2014? The Prime Minister says it will, but can it really do so? I want to go first straight to Manish Tiwari, the Information and Broadcasting Minister in the government. Appreciate your joining us, Mr. Tiwari. Please tell us, Mulayam Singh today has very clearly told CNN and IBN he will not withdraw support, but elections will take place in November. Importantly, he says yours is a party that betrays allies, is using the CBI and income tax to intimidate allies. How do you respond to this? Well, I think, uh, Rajdeep, the first thing that you need to keep in mind is that we've run a very successful coalition over the past nine years. And in coalitions, uh, at times, you have parties who have different perceptions, who have different points of view. Uh, you sit down with them, and if at all there are any difficulties, there are contradictions, you smoothen them out, and we've been uh, fairly good at doing that. So therefore, to answer your question, in a sense, the government is stable, and the Prime Minister yesterday categorically pointed out that the UPA will complete its full term. You know, let there be no misunderstanding about that. You know, you say that the UPA will complete its full term. If Mr. Mulayam Singh were to withdraw support, you come down to 250. You come down even further, even with outside support, to 259. A minority government. Do you believe that's the way forward for your government when your Prime Minister says that we will survive till 2014? The operative word seems to be survive because you seem to be then living on oxygen, week to week oxygen. Well, uh, Rajdeep, uh, every six months uh, since 2004, uh, you've had sections of the media and political pundits who have been predicting the demise of the government and unfortunately they've got it wrong every time. Uh, Mr. Mulayam Singh Yadav has categorically made it clear yes. that he is not withdrawing support. There is support which is there from other sections of allies who support the government from outside. So I do not think that we are really serving any national purpose by shooting this breeze of instability. Government is stable. We are going to go into the second term of this parliament session, you know, the uh, second term of the budget session. And you would see key legislation getting through. So therefore, if Mr. Thought, Tiwari, you know, if Mr. Tiwari, what is the source of... Mr. Mr. Tiwari, what is the source of this if you're belaboring, What is the source of this continuous confidence that you have that your government will be able to pass legislation as a minority government, that your government will ensure... The, that, I mean, where is this confidence coming from? Is it what Mulayam Singh Yadav is saying, that the Congress is using investigative agencies like CBI and income tax to browbeat allies into submission? Uh, first of all, I think the entire premise of your uh, question is uh, fallacious, Rajdeep, that there is any instability in government. Yes. And number two, I think uh, our, test, our track record bears it out that we do politics on the basis of policies and programs. We have neither ever used or misused or abused investigative agencies in the past nine years. Not yes. a single court anywhere in the country has passed any stricture against the UPA government with regard to misuse of any... So how do you explain Mulayam's statement? And let us not, how do you explain and us, Mulayam and Singh going not, on record not, to say that the us, Congress is misusing not, investigative agencies? How do you explain the statement well, think, of an ally of your I, party? I think you should have the uh, patience to listen to the answer in entirety as I have the patience to listen to the question in its completion. 
Uh, as I earlier pointed out, that if Mr. Mulayam Singh Yadav, you know, unfortunately has certain misunderstandings, you know, we would, you know, resolve them. We'll sit, sit across the table and uh, our track record is for everybody to scrutinize. And let's not forget that any investigation which is done by any agency is subject to judicial oversight. And over the past nine years, you've never had a situation where, where, where there has been a stricture of misuse. I do not think there could be more impeccability in so far as the track record is concerned. Let me also tell you what Mulayam Singh told us. He said in that interview that elections will take place in November, not because he wants them, but because the Congress wants them. That the section of the Congress wants the election to be held in November. Is there any truth to the fact that the section of the Congress believes, let's cut our losses and hold elections in November? Well, I don't think there's any question of losses at all. Uh, if you go by the results of the Karnataka civic polls, yes. it's very indicative as to in which direction the political breeze is blowing. Yes. And uh, insofar as cutting the term of any government short, after Prime Minister has spoken yesterday and very categorically articulated that the UPA government will complete its full term, I think that should put all speculation, which is completely unnecessary in the first place, to complete rest. No, no, the, you know, the Prime Minister can, can, can say that elections will take place in 2014 you're smiling away you seem to be suggesting that legislation will 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 go ahead please tell me how how are you going to get through major reforms it seems at the moment this government is no longer about governance but about survival and there's a big difference between governance well, and survival mr tiwari well that's exactly the premise which some people have been pushing since 2004 yes and notwithstanding that you see an entire architecture of rights, rights-based entitlements, you know, which has come into existence. You see major economic reforms which have been passed. In fact, as we speak in the uh, last session of the uh, first term of the budget session, yes. you've had the finance bill go through. So therefore, our track record... No, the finance bill itself, is not a major I reform. The finance bill is not a major when, reform. When the, finance bill, the finance bill and the railway budget are major pieces of legislation which went through you know absolutely smoothly yes. and i do not understand after having demonstrated repeatedly ad nauseum on the floor of the house the stability of the government you know why are you unnecessarily speculating i am speculating i'm not speculating your government is a minority government a minority government well, survival government, goes, well, is, is not a subject of speculation it's the subject of numbers the hard numbers today if mulayam singh withdraws support puts you in a very very precarious position and as he has told us very clearly in that interview i am not withdrawing support for now for now are the operative words mr tiwari yeah well for now obviously means that when you have one year left to the government yes. the government will run through its natural term and elections would be in time and rajdeep yes. you know i understand you know as having been spokesperson for the party and now in my current uh, role you know the imperatives of 24 into 7 news but the one thing that i would like to request you is that unnecessary speculation especially when nobody is questioning the stability of the government allies have categorically come on record trinamool congress today has said there should be a vote of no confidence well trinamool yes trinamool congress trinamool congress has said things in the past but they have supported legislation on the floor of the house. I do not want to even go down that road. Right. But all that I would like to tell you is, please hear the statements which people have been making to your channel. And those statements underscore, underline that there is stability in this country. And can there I? is no room for unwarranted, you know, shooting of the, bru of the breeze. Can I lack of a better word. Can I then ask you in fi finality, the Prime Minister yesterday also interestingly said when asked, whether he would contest a third term. He said it's hypothetical. Am I to understand Mr. Manish Tiwari that Manmohan Singh is still in the race to be the next Prime Minister if the Congress were to come back to power? Well, uh, I think Rajdeep that uh, if you have observed the Prime Minister over the past nine years, you know, political pundits, you know, should have uh, developed and evolved the savvy of really figuring out what the Prime Minister says once the Prime Minister has spoken, I do not think there is any need to add or subtract 
or unnecessarily interpret Can what I? he has said. He very categorically said, it's a hypothetical question. Yes. We'll cross the bridge when we come to it. I think that's a very explicit statement. Can I then in conclusion again ask you, is this government about Sam Dam Dandabhed? That come what may, when the Prime Minister of the country says, even if Samajwadi party goes, we will survive till 2014. That somehow or the other, either by getting parties to abstain, either by ensuring in some way, that, uh, uh, that, that these parties are forced to support you. That is the single point agenda now of your government. Let us survive for the next 12 months. Let, let me take you back you know, to an expose which we attempted in 2008 yes. on the eve of the no confidence vote. Yes. And unfortunately, Rajdeep, I do not want to bring it up yes. because it's a subject of some bitterness, yes. but it fell, fell flat on its face. Yes. So therefore, it is not about Sam, Dam, Dand, Bhed. It is about policies and programs, and we have programmatic uh, support. And in the final analysis, the ultimate polarization in this country is about secular core communal forces and people know yes. as to which side of the fence they would like to stand on. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that, Manish Tiwari, because you seem to suggest that the divide Thank in this you, country Rajiv. is secularism versus communism. Others would question that. That's the fundamental divide. Others would question that statement, but I appreciate your joining us here and giving us your perspective. Let's, you, then, let's then widen Thank the you. debate. Thank is this government going to last till 2014 or not? Joining me now, a special panel, N. Ram, former editor-in-chief of the Hindu, Sharat Pradhan, senior journalist from Uttar Pradesh who tracks UP politics and Mulayam closely, Vinod Mehta, editorial chairman of the Outlook Group, and Bupendra Chaube, national bureau chief, CNN IBN. Before I come to you, gentlemen, I'm going to play what the explicit nature of what Mulayam Singh said once again when he was speaking to IBN 7 on Tiki Bar to Prabhu Chawla. Just listen in for a moment and then let's find out is Mulayam calling, is Mulayam serious when he says there will be elections in November? Listen in. Hum chahte hain ke BJP ke sajhou se sarkar na gire. Nei, BJP sa, BJP hai, 116 MP sa nahi. Nei, BJP paas sa hai MP sa jada. 116 se kaan gire ki sarkar? 150 banta hai total. Hmm? Akali Dal, Nitish Kumar aur Shiv Sahana mila ke 150 banta hai kul. अब बनते उस वक्त क्या स्थिति होगी क्या अब तो आठ रोज महीना के लिए क्या सरकार कराना है क्या फायदा है नहीं आठ रोज महीने की सरकार अरे तब तो और ये बताओ ना कि भाई सरकार के लिए भी सारा समय रहा नहीं अब तो चुनाव ही है सारी पार्टियों सारी पार्टियों ने उम्मीदवारों को घोषित कर दिया है चुनाव हाँ इसी साल हो जाएगा तो पहले जो कह रहे थे कि चुनाव नवंबर में होंगे अगर इस सेशन में नहीं करोगे तो नवंबर तो अपने आप कराएंगे नवंबर चुनाव वैसे चुनाव कांग्रेस कराएगी हाँ चुनाव होगी ओके इलेक्शंस विल बी इन नवंबर लेट्स गो स्ट्रेट टू आर पैनल स्टार्टिंग विद यू विनोन मेहता डू यू बिलीव that the Congress at the moment will survive simply because of its obsession with survival or is it because you think Mulayam Singh Yadav you saw there is barking but will not bite well, Rajdeep, when the Congress says that it will survive till 2014, yes. it is expressing an aspiration, a hope. It hopes it survives till 2014. Whether it does or not, we'll have to see. But, you know, Rajdeep, the player in this, whether who will bring the UPA down, is the gentleman that you interviewed, Mr. Mulayam Singh Yadav. If he once he pulls the plug, then there could be a dynamo kind of impact and lots of other things may fall. Because at this point of time, Mr. Mulayam Singh is afflicted with a disease called Prime Ministeritis. It's a very painful disease and there is, I don't think, no cure for this disease. But he thinks he can become the Prime Minister of India with a third front or a fourth front. Yes. I've just come back from Lucknow. Yes. And people there are quite astounded at the kind of things Mulayam Singh is saying at the moment. For example, he's praising LK Advani. Right. Secondly, he thinks that if he attacks his own son, that he will distance himself from the misgovernance of, this, of his own government. Right. So he's playing all kinds of games and he could be trapped in his own kind of web that he's making 
बिकॉज हिज कोर्टियर्स है मुलायम सिंह साहब आप प्रधानमंत्री बनोगे प्रधानमंत्री बनोगे स्लीप एट नाइट मैं प्रधानमंत्री बनूंगा ही इज गॉट प्राइम मिनिस्टर आइटस एट द मोमेंट एन राम डू यू ऑल्सो बिलीव that that this is what is uh, that the ambitions of the mulayam singhs is what could eventually bring down this government you heard him in that interview saying i will not withdraw support but at the same time attacking the congress virtually accusing it of being a party of betrayers how do you interpret this yes i think uh, he is very much in the opposition and is keeping the government uh, guessing but let's assume the government will survive because uh, that's what they say and they'll do everything to survive a it will be a very dishonorable way of surviving that's what they're really saying that's the message that comes out what we are minority whoever pulls out and quote they even claim to be stable <laughs> which is quite astounding i heard mr tiwari yes. claim that we are stable and nobody in this country believes they're stable they may well survive the second point i want to make is the longer they survive until the next general election the worse it will get for him that's i think that's one thing the opposition has uh, got on to and i think it's a great time to be in the opposition today so i'm assuming they will survive as long as they wish to ahead of the uh, until they, the next general election they will serve uh, it'll there will be a heavy price that the congress will pay and the country will pay for this because it's the most dishonorable thing by the way yes you asked uh, as tiwari the question rajdeep about misuse two glaring examples jagan yes. in andhra pradesh yes as though they didn't know what was happening with ysr and later on and more recently although the, the prime minister and the finance minister tried to distance themselves from it even assuming it's true the cbi raid on stalin's house what kind of message does it send to the people of india and to other political parties including allies well this said graceful. well said you believe that survival will be dishonorable the man in which this government wants to survive i'll come back to it in a moment sharad pradhan as a journalist who has tracked mulayam for years am i to understand what am i to understand when he says congress betrays allies is a dhokebaaz party but says i will not withdraw support because i don't want to help the bjp is mulayam singh playing political brinkmanship or is this political blackmail it's uh, it's outright political blackmail you know knowing mulayam how he is mulayam is a very calculating kind of politician and all along you know at the moment with the cr the cbi sword hanging over his neck that is the most disturbing thing for him and this is the first time in these years that he has got an occasion to blackmail the the upa so this is the first time he trying to extract his pound of flesh by Uh, pressurizing the congress to take the cbi um, off his neck that's the way you that, believe that is, that is you believe that important. basically mulayam wants the cbi off his back and he's putting pressure on the congress to ensure that in the next few months get rid of all the cases against him as a matter of him. fact he Yeah, he has said it in as many words. The, yes. The fact that he has now, I've been saying this for the last uh, for for months, but uh, now he has said it himself that uh, the UPA is accusing the C UPA of uh, misusing and abusing the CBI and income tax, right. which is what he is facing, and okay. his rival Mayawati is facing. Let's see. So, so it's it's very clear. Let, let and now he has even made his prime ministerial ambitions. He has aired his prime in Safai two days back. Yes. He said he told his people he addressed the uh, uh, public meeting and he said that just as you have elected my son and made him chief minister, you vote for me in a big way so that I can get the most prestigious position. So Delhi. he's got prime minister itis as as Vinod Mehta says, but Bhupen. the chobe you interviewed mulayam this morning he kept insisting in that interview elections will take place in november where is mulayam getting this confidence from that elections will take place in november when he himself says i will not withdraw support or is this simply trying to keep the morale of his cadres going that get ready for election yes, and that's the message is more for his cadres than anyone else at the moment of will he really withdraw support right away no uh, as far as the question of mulayam singh yadav immediately withdrawing support say within the forthcoming budget session of parliament after recess is concerned no he's not going to be doing that and the reason why mulayam is not going to do that is because there is a particular dimension of mulayam singh yadavs in samajwadi party's politics which is not talked about which is mulayam's proximity to the corporate sector look at the decisions that mulayam singh yadav and the samajwadi party have taken since 
what ha what did samajwadi party do before and after the nuclear deal trust fort what did samajwadi party do in 2010 before and after raising a huge ruckus outside parliament on the question of hike in diesel and petrol prices and most recently we have seen in 2012 what did bulaim singh yadav say outside parliament when it came to the question of supporting or not supporting foreign direct investment multiplan retail and then what is the stand he took inside parliament he is not withdrawing support right now because not only does he want the upa to remove this cbi bogey around his neck he is also under pressure from his corporate friends let me then come to vinod mehta what the prime minister said the prime minister claimed that even if mulayam leaves the government the government will survive and will be stable and you heard manish tiwari virtually repeat that today a minority government mr mehta so heavily dependent on allies can such a government provide any kind of effective governance we are now looking at survival versus governance can it really govern any more can manmohan singh govern any more well rajdeep as i told you earlier that when the prime minister says that he will survive till 2014 yes he is keeping his fingers crossed he is say he is hoping it will happen yes now as far as survival versus governance is concerned i think by and large this government gave up governance about two one or about 18 months ago right and it is now surviving on the hope which all governments survive that the longer they stay in office some miracle will happen bjp will shoot itself in the foot narendra modi will do some crazy thing they will be the beneficiaries by default so the idea of staying till the last possible date yes is to make sure that they can extract the maximum mileage from that time because in in one sense the longer they stay rajdeep yes they are taking a risk because the more discredited they will become so do you believe this government should go for a snap poll winning, do you believe this they, government is better off going for a snap poll in 14 they become more discredited so they are taking a huge risk you believe they are taking a huge gamble and ram do you believe that that it is better for a government like this to go in for that snap poll mulayam suggesting the congress itself should go in for a poll in november when survival becomes an end in itself Do you believe that's a rather dishonorable way, as you were earlier saying, of of remaining in office? Absolutely, and the long if they stay till April, May, I think it'll get worse for them. We can guarantee it, can't we? Given given all that we know about this government, given the uncertainty about its future, given the way its allies are deserting it or are sniping at it, so I think given all this, uh, what what on earth can uh, save them? A god from the machine? No way. In, in given that given that what are really then mulayam singh's options today sharad pradhan we've spoken a bit about the prime minister but mulayam's options can he afford to go in for this snap poll with the uncertainty that he no longer may be able to call the shots today at least he can perhaps try and get this government to get the cbi office back so that's that's the reason mulayam is very clear that he will not pull the plugs because you know he would have done that if he knew that his pulling the plug would bring the government down then he would take credit for the fall of the government right. he knows that it is not going to if the government is not going to fall even if he were to pull the rug so that's that's the reason he is exerting pressure on them and that's the reason he also because he knows now on being asked he he maintains that no 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 i am not i am i am not pulling the uh, I, the government down i don't want to bring the government down because of blah 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 the usual can i can i just uh, can, can uh, i know, just stop the you there for a moment because i want bupen yeah. who, who interviewed him to just uh, uh, amplify the point yeah. you made is sharat uh, 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 Sharad's uh, analysis spot on there that Mulayam is worried that even if he was to bring down this or uh, withdraw support, the likes of Mayawati, Mamta, possibly even the left would continue to prop up the government not to be seen on the same side as the BJP. That's his genuine fear, and in fact, I did ask the question to him in that interview that was he worried that he is not going to get hold of the kind of parties who he'll require in order to ensure that a snap poll takes place. His response was that in politics, accidents often take place. Anything is possible. as and when a situation arises the problem is rajdeep that a mamta banerji who cannot do business with the bjp who has walked out of the upa is looking for an opportunity where she could perhaps make some kind of a return some kind of an informal understanding yes. with the upa you look at uh, the dmk which has just walked out again it's a party which believes that its interest will be served if it remains uh, aloof both from the bjp and congress it's not going to be possible mulayam alone does not determine who will but there is also the, the question of the trust Absolutely. nobody trust mulayam here is someone who has in the past aligned with the kalyan singh 
Here is someone who has virtually betrayed virtually any ally that he's ever had. You saw what he did with Mamta Banerjee last throughout year during the, the president's interview. election. Does anyone trust yeah. Mulayam Singh? Throughout the interview today, Rajdeep, Mulayam's basic refrain was, I cannot be seen on the same side as the communal forces read the BJP. This is the, the oldest argument which has been made by Mulayam Singh Yadav. And he has often yeah. tried to right. justify all his political moves with this. Can I then, Vinod Mehta, come back again once for a moment to Manmohan Singh? Because he's the other crucial M that we need to look at in this M factor. He was asked a question yesterday on whether he would like to contest for Prime Minister again. I asked it to Manish Tiwari too. Prime Minister said it's hypothetical. Almost suggesting that he's not ruling it out. He's going to be 81 next year. Do you get a sense that Manmohan Singh is neither tired nor retired? <laughs> well, Rajiv, that's quite extraordinary. I thought Mulayam Singh Yadav had Prime Minister rights, but Mr. Manmohan Singh, after serving two terms, still does, wants a five more years. I think, Rajdeep, we are both journalists. Yes. But I can't see a set of circumstances. I can't see a, a numbers game emerging in such a way yes. that Mr. Dr. Manmohan Singh gets another term. It's, it, anything is possible in politics, but it's highly unlikely that he will get a third term and it's highly unlikely yes. that the Congress will go into the next general election whenever it happens, even suggesting partially that Dr. Manmohan Singh could be Prime Minister. But are we, are, but I think, I'm sorry to say this yes. is quite discredited yes. and he's definitely <coughs> a, a, he's negative he, he's an albatross for the Congress at the moment. But he's you know, nice this chap, albatross, if, 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 I may, if I may interrupt, the albatross uh, uh, is an animal, some would say, which can survive longer than most believe. And Ram, do you believe that Manmohan Singh still have, hasn't given up Prime Minister Rytus, the, the disease which afflicts uh, apparently Mulayam Singh at the moment? Rajiv, I think uh, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh doesn't really know. Uh, Sonia Gandhi, to her credit, shut that door and I don't think uh, Rahul Gandhi again to be fair to him has Prime Minister rightis. Right. Nothing suggests there is. So Manmohan Singh thinks perhaps that he's the only one in the field but yes. he doesn't really know. Uh, so I think uh, we need not over interpret that response to uh, what was clearly uh, right. yeah, media, you know I, I wouldn't say it's a loaded question it's a relevant question but it's uh, <laughs> you know you're asking somebody and what else would he say? Fair enough. Who doesn't know about it and as uh, Vinod says has uh, has not given up his ambitions. That's he, pretty clear. He hasn't given up his ambitions entirely. I just want to ask my panel the final question. If you all were, I'm not sure any of you are betting men but Sharat Pradhan, if you were a betting man, elections in November this year or, in, uh, or on schedule in April, May next year, a quick answer. Well, I, 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 don't, I don't think the elections would be held in November but maybe a little later. Okay. Less, uh, sh short of May, but uh, not in November. Not in November. Bupendra Chobe, your sense yeah. after that interview with Mulayam, is it going to be November or is it going to be in 2014? I think Mulayam's other problem is that he's worried that if he doesn't pull this, bring this government down, if he doesn't withdraw support, maybe his arch rival Mayavati could put a very high price tag with all the other allies and bring this government down. The next parliament session is going to be a session which will be split between the SP and the BSP. Vinod Mehta, I don't know if you're a betting man. Elections in November or will they be held on schedule April, May next year? As Jeffrey Boycott said, I'll keep my money in my pocket. Ah, you're being very safe. And Ram, as, uh, as, as, as a great follower of Jeffrey Boycott and cricket, would you put your money in your pocket on that one? Or do you believe elections in November or, or on schedule in April, no, no, May no. next year? No, I think given, the, given what I said about the dishonorable course, uh, April, May. Okay, you believe, bet. you believe that this government will do anything, therefore, to survive till April, May. On that note, rather sanguine and cynical note, some would say, uh, I appreciate my panel joining us on our talking point tonight. Thank you very much on joining us here on India at 9. Editor's take, where do we stand? It is not without reason that Mulayam Singh started his career as a wrestler on Manmo or Manmohan Singh as an academic. Mulayam goes for the jugular. Manmohan Singh prefers to weigh his words carefully. One is a political battler, the other the great survivor. Mulayam is itching to leave the UPA. Manmohan wants to stay in office till the very last day. What is clear in this tussle between the two M's, governance has taken a real tumble. 2013 or 2014 elections, does it make any real difference any longer? Okay, let's turn to another big exclusive we have tonight. Days after the DMK pulled out of the centre and Jailalitha barred Lankan cricketers from playing in Chennai, the centre has finally decided to take a tough stand. 
External Affairs Minister Salman Khurshid today rejected the Tamil Nadu Assembly resolution demanding a separate Elam and for Sri Lanka to be treated as an unfriendly state. He was speaking to Karan Thapar on Devil's Advocate. How do you, as External Affairs Minister, respond to the resolution passed by the Tamil Nadu Assembly asking the New Delhi government not to consider Sri Lanka as a friendly country, to impose economic sanctions, and more importantly, to push at the United Nations for a resolution that would call for a referendum on Elam? See, I, I, I take it on board that there are very strong feelings, very f strong feelings in Tamil Nadu, and not just of other parties, but in our own party members have, have very strong feelings and we've uh, we've taken those feelings on board and these feelings are not entirely out of sync with what many other people in the world think at the same time we do believe that ultimately the negotiation that we've done with Sri Lanka the, the dialogue that we have with Sri Lanka and the effort that we've made for rehabilitation in Sri Lanka is equally important. But you know, you say you've taken that Tamil Nadu Assembly resolution on board and you say it's in sync with the feelings that many people have even within your own party. Not all of it, but, but a lot of it. That's what I want to ask. Are you, for instance, considering declaring the country unfriendly? No. Are you considering economic sanctions? No. Would you consider at the UN passing a resolution or encouraging people to pass a ref resolution to call for a referendum on Elam? No. So in other words, those three critical aspects of the Tamil Nadu resolution, you've rejected? Long ago. I mean, that's, there's no question of accepting them. And that's not the only, the only state that has a stake in this. What about the other states? There are many other assemblies. The rest of India is not supporting this. If all of India was to support it, it would be another matter. But if one state supports something, we are sensitive to their concerns, but we don't necessarily have to accept everything they say. Let's turn to the big story coming in from Bangalore, where a woman is in a near vegetative state for over three years because of the callous attitude of a hospital. Her husband, Muni Raju, has been fighting a lonely battle to seek answers from those responsible for her condition. Now Muni Raju has turned a citizen journalist for CNN and IBN to continue his fight against medical negligence. Shailaja and I got married in the summer of 2003. Six years of togetherness and two daughters. We were a happy family. I am Muniraju. Today I have turned citizen journalist to seek justice for my wife Shailaja. She has been in a vegetative state for three years and I believe my wife is in this state only because of scaleless attitude of medical authority. On November 29th, 2009, my wife complained of severe back pain. I rushed her to Mallike Medical Center where the doctors advised immediate surgery for what was called a prolapse disc. Even though Shailaja had no history of backache, I trusted the diagnosis at Mallike Medical Center and we decided to go for the surgery. She was wheeled into the operation theater and that was the last time I saw my wife walking and talking. The treatment summary given by the doctors state that Shailaja developed ventricular tachycardia or rapid heartbeat and hypotension after anesthesia. I filed an FIR against the doctors. The hospital was forced to bear responsibility for her treatment. The hospital authorities forcibly discharged her and shifted her to MS Ramaya Hospital. But all this was done without our permission. In spite of their promises, Malige Medical Center stopped paying the second hospital after the initial payment. On the 4th of November, MS Ramaya asked us to vacate the hospital bed. I had no option but to bring my wife home where we continue to fight a silent battle. I wrote letters to the then Karnataka Chief Minister B.S. Yediyurappa and the Health Minister Sri Ramulu and many others. However, the situation did not improve for Shailaja. With CNN IBN's CJ team, I decided to take the battle up once again and approach the authorities. Malige Medical Center did not respond to our queries asking for their side of the story. Muniraju's case is being heard by the Karnataka Medical Council whose own status is under question. CNN and IBN then approached the doctors concerned with the case. The doctors refused to interact with us and ran away on seeing the cameras. We then apprised the Medical Education Minister of Karnataka of this case. If there is any negligence, we can take an action and put a fine of more than 2 lakhs and even imprisonment of 6 months is there. So we, shortly, within a week, we are getting the ordinance. By, by through, we will get a uh, teeth for that. I will continue to fight until those who are responsible for my wife's condition are brought to justice. This is Muniraju, 
सिटीजन जर्नलिस्ट सी एन एन आई बी एन and here's a citizen journalist impact we've aired that story and earlier we today we spoke to shailaja's brother and the karnataka health minister s a ramadas who promised action by tomorrow listen in laws take a long time but how does a family like this get justice as soon as possible yeah tomorrow only tomorrow by evening i will see that because we have the teeth now from tomorrow itself we will take action and we will come back to you and what is the what is the kind of action that you would actually be taking what are you committing to two, with shailaja's case is one is one is uh, under the uh, ipc we have registered there one thing and uh, second one is from uh, the medical uh, department itself we have power to take action against the institution and also comp- get the compensation uh for the losses right. and other things uh, is there any yeah. way that you can actually help this family uh, itself because at the end of the day it has changed this this incident has changed everyone's life for that tomorrow tomorrow by evening i will see that we will have a discussion with the chief minister of karnataka and we will come back with the solution one 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 side of this is of course the appeal to get justice to this family but the other side is really the kind of financial uh, responsibility uh, this family also needs are you making a commitment towards that as well yeah tomorrow uh, uh, through the channel i am requesting uh, the victims uh, Uh, to meet me tomorrow by 12 o'clock in my office i will take them to the chief minister and i will see that uh, um, uh, justice will be given and uh, also comes government will come to help of uh, the victims tomorrow madam so who says citizen journalism cannot have an impact remember that's the way you the citizen can be empowered let's hope that there is justice in that case in bangalore let's go straight back to fatima for what else is making the headlines in speed news fatima tarjeep thanks very much the maharashtra mla is accused of beating up a policeman inside the assembly premises are likely to go scot free that despite that footage available from 28 cctv cameras crime branch sources claim that footage is unclear Controversy over Modi's business meeting with the US delegation which included three congressmen a media report suggests they paid between 3000 and 16000 dollars for that trip. Tribal Affairs Minister KC Deo has lashed out at the Chhattisgarh government for failing to do its duty saying higher ups could be involved in pushing tribal girls in government run hostels into prostitution this after an IVN7 investigation exposed that young tribal girls are being sexually abused in those homes. And there's been a potential breakthrough in that shooting of the BSP leader Deepak Bhardwaj in Delhi sources telling CNN IBN that the Delhi police believe they've identified the shooters and recovered the two cars that were used. And the former Pakistan president Pervez Musharraf had a shoe thrown at him at a court in Sindh as his preventative bail was extended by 15 days in three cases against him including the confinement of 62 judges after he declared a state of emergency back in 2007. And there is even more tension in the Korean Peninsula. North Korea has uh, raised that pitch with its leader Kim Jong Un signing on a decision to keep its rockets on standby. He met with military leaders after the US sent in stealth bombers for military exercises in South Korea. New Zealand cricketer Jesse Ryder is out of coma and even interacted with friends and family. Ryder was in critical shape following two attacks on him on Wednesday night that left him with a fractured skull and punctured lung. Police have made two arrests so far. That's it from me. It is back to you, Rajdeep. Thanks very much, Fatima. Okay, in a moment from now, Suhasini Heather joins you with Worldview. That big election now that has been sounded in Pakistan. She'll have all the reports coming in from there in a moment. Our image tonight. Remember, it's going to be Easter Sunday soon. Christians are marking Jesus's crucifixion today with Good Friday across the country. Have a great and. Uh, Nice Easter weekend enjoy your Easter eggs and be safe as always good night goodbye